Hey everyone, you're watching the Set of Bounce. Big J and I will be here talking in a new series, reviewing all of the teams' off seasons, their trade periods, and their drafts, as well as looking forward to some predictions for 2023. And today we start off with the Adelaide Crows. <laughs> How you doing, Big J? I'm good, mate. How you doing? Yeah, good. Really excited. The draft's done. All of the lists mm -hmm. are finalised. Things are starting to take shape for next year. We've, we've even got around one fixture. Yeah, it's pretty exciting, hey? Absolutely. And in a couple of weeks' time, you'll have likely to have Super Coach opening up as well. But that's a discussion for later. I guess we're here focusing on Adelaide a team on the, mm -hmm. the rise, rebuilding, and I guess we'll start talking about their 2022 season. Mm -hmm. You know, they finished 14th on the ladder this past year. They had their eight wins with not the best percentage, underneath under 90% at 86.7. Uh, what what do you, do you think of their performance this year? Um, I mean, the percentage kind of makes sense because their wins were less than their losses, right? So games they lost, they probably lost by quite a lot. And then some games they won maybe weren't as, you know, maybe weren't blowouts, they were pretty close. So ends that percentage. Um, I think they they feel like they're in a bit of a transition year. Um, as we know with them bringing in a lot of kids and their, their demographic age group um, for the team. But overall, I think they kind of were placed where they were supposed to be placed this year. So... Not necessarily, you know, competing for top eight, but not the worst team of the of the league. What do you reckon? Yeah, I agree with that. I think they've definitely done a really good job being competitive as well in a lot of games, not being easy beats uh, in terms of, you know, even though things might not be go going the best for them, but they still have some quite a bit of character uh, to, to keep fighting things out. And I think their best performance for the year. I think what we've got here was when they beat Carlton at home. And that really, uh, I suppose, made made a lot of Carlton fans super, super nervous about, you know, they could choke out of finals. Uh, and that's what ended up happening. But it was, in, it was incredible to see just the, the contested aspect of Adelaide and they've got some great players that love that contested ball winning uh, and tackling. So I think Nick's uh, and that group over there in Adelaide uh, are really happy with the group that's that's developing. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think they've done pretty well with cycling out a few older players too or, or getting replacements for those older players. So next year's got to look better than what, how they've done this year, right? Oh. Yeah, you would think so. Another preseason into these great young players, uh, and Rochelle uh, Rochelle uh, was, you know, a revelation at the start of this year. He was, you know, really started like a house on fire, and you can see that this guy, he's just X factor. Uh, and if he can, you know, another preseason into him, it's, you know, and they've added the likes of Rankin, um, like we see here in this slide. You know, they brought in the likes of Rankin over from Gold yeah. Coast, you know. Some real exciting X Factor players starting to gather here at, at the Crows. Mm, definitely, and just speaking on on Rochelle as well, Jordan Dawson basically came out of nowhere mm. like a house on fire and really turned games games for them. So, you know, another year of him kind of finding his spot, then working out how to play him to his best. Yeah, they're going to be a tough team. So, yeah, they brought in Rankin this year. Um, it's interesting to see that he was kind of the only one out of the Gold Coast group of the young guys to leave. Um, talking about Lukosius and Raul and, and those other guys. Um, Rankin was kind of the one to go. He's on huge money from, from what I'm hearing. So he better perform this year. Um, adds to their small forward stock, which is fantastic for Adelaide because teaming up with Rochelle is going to be tough. But it also means... You know, the likes of James Rowe, like we see on the right-hand side, he's left now. So yeah. maybe someone will pick him up. Maybe he'll continue his career in the VFL somewhere. But 
the team's just getting better. What do you reckon? Yeah, I definitely agree. And I think part of the excitement that comes from Rankin is his ability to to push up the ground. I think he's he's got a beautiful disposal. And and being a natural forward, you see a lot of times whenever a forward moves up the ground, their kicks inside 50 are sensational because mm. it's almost like they're telling their midfielders, I want it here. Kick it like yeah. me. This is how I want the ball coming in. And he's got some exquisite touch. You know, him kicking that ball into a forward line um, that has some great emerging talent on top of, you know, the likes of Tex Walker is going to hang around for another season. He's a great mm-hmm. leader. Yeah, he's had some off-field problems, which we're not going to get into here. Uh, but in terms of a player, Tex has still got it. And I won't forget how he really made us work for our win uh, when we played them earlier in the year last year at Marvel. He's still capable of taking over a game. So I agree. I think the Crows will only continue to get better from here on out. And the, the players that they missed, that they've lost, you know, like Billy Frampton going to the Pies, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that that's really going to, you know, be a massive loss for them. I think, you know, mm. I think overall, I don't think a, a key defensive pers- a player is it's really going to ruin their progression. I think they've still got plenty of players um, that can fill that role and, and develop. And they've, especially when they've picked up their father-son, um on you know, as we can see here with Mix uh, Max uh, Michelini, I think is how you pronounce it. He's he was touted as one of the best key defenders uh, of this draft, who was really really difficult to play against. Um, and so, when you you know you can when you've got someone like that, I'm sure Adelaide had no problems uh, sending Billy Frampton over to the Pies. Yeah, I think the the three players they did lose were more depth than anything else. Like I don't think Rowe really played much outside of, like, being cover if someone was injured. Same with the other players, and then Luke Brown as well. So they, they've mm-hmm. lost a couple of players, yes, but it's not like a cull like we've seen in some other clubs this year. Yeah, correct. Especially, like, when you when you have, like, the, of Hawthorne, for example, who's really uh, trying to clear out a lot of established senior players um, to give more opportunities to the children, to the, to the kids. Um, that's not the case here with Adelaide. Adelaide are still definitely... Um, they've identified that they've got the talent and there's just sort of, you know, just all about giving them more time, more responsibility uh, and developing under some really, you know, talented senior players like your Sloans, um, who, who was awesome and Laird, again, awesome. Um, mm. They're great players. Even even your Dawsons as well for that backline wing position and Matt Crouch mm. sticking around too. So looking at the players they brought in the draft this year, um, Max Michelini, I think I've got his name right, key defender. Um, The good thing about spending a lot of points this year on a lot of picks on Rankin is the fact that they had this guy coming through. So maybe they didn't want him at such an early pick, but it still gave them another first rounder. So Rankin spend a first rounder or two, and then they've got him in there as well. So great player, should come in and, and slot into that back line. Um, I'm not sure if he'll play AFL straight away. I know they've got Jordan Butts and a couple of other players there, but he'll definitely be pushing for a spot. Um, they've got Billy Dowling as well, and then Hugh Bond. So a couple of players to kind of shore up that midfield a little bit. Um, and then they had a couple of re-rookies as well. So two players there that really had struggled with injury this year, to my knowledge. So Andrew McPherson and Paul Seedsman. So guys who are a little bit older, but struggle with injuries and the club's given them some faith and said, hey, if you can get your body right, you can play some senior footy. So that's why they've picked those guys up again. Yeah. And you sort of know what you're going to get, especially with, you know, the likes of Seedsman. Um, Mm -hmm. Great season professionals um, that know how the game is played, know what's required. And I'm sure they are just such a benefit to have around the club um, in terms of training and leadership for the younger players that they've that they're building uh, and trying to develop over there at the crows uh, and you know seedsman I, I won't forget you know how i think it's it's really unfortunate how he's been called with injury i think he's a sensational player and i remember at the time when he arrived at adelaide i thought oh that was a great acquisition very shrewd pickup by the crows and 
yeah, as you say, I'm sure they, they weren't too happy about having to match the bid uh, for Max at pick 17. Um, the Swans were the villains this year with the draft and mm -hmm. they were throwing bids left, right and centre. But that's what that's what they do. They want they want to win. They want to get an edge. And uh, you know, I'm sure still, despite that, the Crows had no issues with match with matching that bid because of Max Caliber. Uh, I think he's yeah. I think he's going to be a great player for him. And again, a work in progress, like the rest of the team. There's no rush uh, at this point in time. It's all about uh, the slow development. Um, and that sort of leads us to predictions for this year. What sort of you know, development that we see in their side, um, you know, but between you know, eight, nine wins, because um, we do think that there's going to be some progression. It's just that a lot of the league is getting better. You know, they'll put them in the 12 to 14 range. And I think that's, if they can achieve that, then I think that is a very successful season for them, especially with, there are a few teams out of the eight that are, look, that are pushing to get up, which would naturally cause other teams to fall. So if they can fall in that 12 to 14, you know, closer to 12, then I think that is a, a, a positive result for the Crows this year. Yeah, definitely. Um, looking back, what we said about their best game this year versus Carlton, it probably won't happen again in 2023. So games mm. like that, that, you know, maybe they've pulled the, the win out of nowhere, you'd consider with those games, it just might not happen. Hence their similar ladder position for, for next year. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, and a key factor, I think, that maybe not enough people, that we think that a lot, not enough people are talking about, um, is Darren Burgess. He's the world-renowned fitness guru who has been to quite a few teams and has really picked up uh, picked up a lot of these teams and improved their fitness base. And they're able to run out seasons really well. And history tells us that any team that Darren Burgess could those two, it's from the second season onwards that they start to really flourish and they, and they reap the benefits uh, of, of that training uh, regimen. So mm. I think it's really exciting for, for Adelaide fans. This is the second preseason under Darren Burgess. And for someone like Rankin, who really the sky's the limit, it, it would do him an, a world of good to train under Darren Burgess and, and to really make sure that his body is right to go. Uh, and, you know, training with fellow, you know, with excellent professionals um, in Sloan and Laird and Crouch, uh, it, it will be, it will be sensational. Uh, it's something really exciting for, for the Crows. Yeah, definitely. I have a question for you. Do you, I know um, he was touted a little bit and shopped around in the, in the off season, but do you think Matt Crouch kind of comes back to form? He's had a couple of injuries and, and, you know, I think he played VFL for a while but he's playing with Adelaide again next year. Do you reckon he comes back to form or, or kind of falls away again? What's your thoughts? It really comes down to opportunity, I think. there's no, there should, I don't think there's much doubt that he's certainly got talent and drive. Um, and it, I think it also comes down to him and how he can respond. We, we, it was you know, reported that he was very disappointed uh, about you know, the club's treatment of him. And I suppose, yeah. you know, can he can he overcome that? Can he put that behind him? Take it as, you know, take it on board that what I've done isn't, you know, being acknowledged, I suppose, and that I probably have to do more if, if I can do more. There, you know, that's something only he can really answer. Um, I know it's, it's very much... It's almost like me sitting on the fence, but it's really hard for me to, to really analyze whether or not um, Crouch will be able to overcome this. I, I think he definitely has the, the talent and the drive, and mm -hmm. I think there should be a spot there for them for, for him on that list, um, especially in the case of an injury. I would expect him to be the first one uh, to be called on. But, you know, yeah. that's that's something that, as an outsider, with for now, it's... It looked, it looked interesting. It looked peculiar to me. I, I thought he's someone that should definitely be given a shot. But, you know, what happens inside those four walls, um, they're definitely keeping a lot more tighter now. There's not, they're not leaking as much as they did from the other scandal that happened um, at the club. So I think they've, they've done well to close shop, I suppose. Yeah, I think for me, like, if 
if he can get back up to fitness, he's going to be fantastic for them because I, I reckon the leadership's still there. The experience is still there. Being a bit of a high accumulator, I, I would call him a high accumulator, maybe not as damaging, but now they've got the kids coming through who are those damaging players and that with him being fit, they'll have someone to feed off. So it's only better if it can get you know, get back to form. Yeah, I agree. That, that's that's sort of what surprised me a lot because he has those that, that capability. The fact that, you know, injury is out of your control and obviously injury can impact your form and your and your confidence in your body, which is why I found it pretty surprising that they took that route um, that route with um, with treating him in that way. So I definitely agree with you. I think he has a lot to give. It's just a question of whether or not the Crows and him um, can work it work it out. If he's going to be there for another year, you might as well work together and try and maximise the results for both parties. Mm, 100%. Awesome. So with that, that brings our discussion of the Adelaide Crows to a close, rhyming mm-hmm. accidentally slash not so much so. Uh, looking forward to how they do next year. They're an exciting young yeah. group. And I'm sure a lot of the Adelaide supporters out there, yeah, you're not going to win a flag this year. Yeah, unlikely to make the eight, but it's all about progression and development. Keep an eye on that percentage. I think that will be a more accurate representation of where your club is at. Yeah, and dynasties don't take, you know, take one year. You can see the progression. You can see how much better the team's becoming. So just have to ride the wave. Absolutely. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. That wrap, that wraps up our discussion on the Crows. Stay tuned to the channel. Subscribe, share, mm. like. We've got the other 17 teams coming up, and we'll have some guests for a few of them. Definitely. All right, guys. Catch you next time. Bye. See ya. Bye.